This is a wood gas stove I made today. Actually, it's a top-lit updraft gasifier. I'll show you how it's built. It consists of four parts. The burn chamber, the outer secondary air warmer, the stand made out of a agricultural disc, and a round donut-shaped piece of metal. What I'm doing today is creating a wood gas camp stove. And we have a primary combustion chamber. That's this piece here. That's going to sit on our disc base, like that. The secondary combustion air warmer slips over the top. And what's going to happen in this is the primary combustion air is going to be entering in the bottom holes and uh, there's some both on the bottom plate as well as the uh, holes along the bottom. There's little standoffs to give it a place for the air to go up and in. The air will enter through these larger holes and most of the air will be being drawn up into the uh, primary combustion but then the wood gas will come off the uh, biofuel and the secondary combustion air, which will be pre-warmed, enters in the upper slots and burns that wood gas. So that's going to spit on like that. And then our top plate slips on top like that. We'll go weld it together now. Okay, so she's welded together. Nice little stove. Um, I've only tacked it in most places so that uh, should we need to adjust something it'll be readily adjustable. Let's fill it up and try it now. What I have here is some well-dried wood chips. So we'll fill our top lift updraft gasifier up with those. this handy bird nest for kindling. And we'll light the thing. From previous experience with uh, top lit updraft gasifiers, I know that a chimney makes all the difference in the world to get this thing going. What the chimney does is it helps create uh, a draft. It gives it a, a confined space for those hot flue gases to um, do their work and to expand and, and rise up and suck air into the bottom holes of our um, wood gas stove. She's coming. We'll let it heat up a bit. Ooh. Perhaps you'd like a closer look. Nice flame down there. Once the wood gets started, we won't need the chimney. But until it does, the chimney helps a lot. Watch what happens. We have a flame like that. You stick the chimney on, and you get a, a roaring inferno. too much, you take it off, and you got a good flame there, and it'll slowly go back down to a more controlled burn, but that's not a bad fire, but we still got to make a small chimney, I think like a one foot chimney or something that has a um, cooktop on top would be the ideal thing here. Yeah, there's not much wood left in it. What happens if we add a little bit? Getting quite a pile of ash down there. Or not ash, coal. Ooh, look at that.
smokes like crazy. Put our chimney on. Create that good draft. Lots of smoke. She's going to come around in just a minute here. Come on. I'll bet that smoke would light at this point if we had a, a flame. Sure enough. Oops. Oh, is that cool or what? Huh, did, can you believe that? Is that not the coolest thing? Fire's an amazing thing, isn't it? So if he had a little shoot, kind of like our rocket stove, kind of like the V1 rocket stove, maybe this is the new addition to the rocket stoves. Secondary combustion air. Limited primary combustion air. We sort of get this effect when we burn the V1 rocket stove and you kind of almost smother it. Oh, this is too cool. Notice the wood gas being burned where the secondary combustion air is being introduced. Mix in some of this poorer quality. Well, this is just fascinating to me, just fascinating. You can see the fire doing more poorly now because of all the water vapor and the poorer quality fuel that I just added. Come on, keep going. Keep burning, keep burning. Heat it up, heat it up. Oh, there we lost our flame. Rather than poison ourselves, we'll light it again. Maybe it needs a chimney. Oh, look at that now. next video, we'll focus on creating a chimney with a pan holder on top of it. <sighs> I tell you, that is just too neat.